While the main business of railroads in the United States is freight hauling, there are still a few areas where a well-developed passenger train system is thriving. The Northeast Corridor between Washington, D.C. and Boston is one such place. When mistakes occur here, they are often fatal. On the evening of February 16, 1996, a full load of commuters were on their way home aboard a Maryland area rail commuter train, or MARC train. They were getting close to their destination, Washington, D.C.'s Union Station. It was Friday night, and many were looking forward to the weekend. The MARC train was moving along at a pretty good clip, over 60 miles per hour. 40 miles away, an Amtrak passenger train, the Capital Limited, pulled out of Union Station. It was running late on its way to Chicago. 30 minutes later, the Amtrak train and the Mark train crashed in a fiery head-on collision. I remember that day very distinctly because um, we were just getting ready to sit down to have dinner. And the phone rang and said, you guys got a train wreck. We just dropped and we were all out the door. Rescuers had to battle their way through a steep, densely wooded area. As they arrived on the scene, they discovered a blazing inferno. When the two trains hit, diesel fuel gushed out of the Amtrak tanks and spewed into a gaping hole in the lead mark car. The scene was... Um, Probably one of the more devastating things that a firefighter will encounter. You have a large area that's involved. You have fire that's in two different areas. You have victims that are injured. You talk about the big one occurring, and just initially, as soon as it went out, you could tell that this was, this was going to be a serious incident. And I said, man, this is an accident. I don't know where I got all this religion from, but I mean, it was just coming out of me. Lord, what, what are we going to do? And it was an interesting situation just to try to get into the train because the way it was ripped open, every time you took a step, your foot would fall through the floor. Once we got in, we advanced our line up through the train and knocked the rest of the fire that was in there. As the smoke began to clear, the firefighters discovered a gruesome scene. What's up? What's on the other side? There's pretty much bodies everywhere you step. Uh, you crawl over one, you crawl onto another, you crawl over that body, onto another body. which was, it was a strange feeling. I mean, you felt bodies in a house fire before, you know, one or two, but it was strange to feel body after body. Three crew members and eight passengers died that night. The National Transportation Safety Board immediately launched an investigation. A yellow warning signal 10 miles from the impact zone should have told the Mark engineer to slow down and give the right-of-way to the Amtrak train. After the Mark engineer stopped his train at the Kensington station, he then accelerated to 60 miles an hour, forgetting about the caution signal. The Amtrak passenger liner had switched tracks to pass a slower-moving freight train. By the time the Mark train engineer hit his emergency brakes, he was only 1,100 feet away from disaster. When the investigators completed their work, another safety problem became evident. Autopsies revealed that many of the passengers were killed by flames and smoke, and not by the impact of the crash. We know that eight of those 11 people did not die 
in the crash itself from trauma. They died from either smoke inhalation or smoke and fire damage. What we also know is that the people were not able, those that survived the initial crash, were not able to get out of the cars. I was appalled when I saw how difficult it would be for any, any person to get out of those cars. There were, there were some emergency windows marked, but they were poorly marked and without emergency lighting, which had failed in this case, it would be almost impossible for people to find them. So just, just think about that. Smoke, fire, darkness, people can't breathe. I mean, it would be almost impossible for anyone to get out, and that's exactly what happened. Today, at least half of the windows in passenger cars are emergency escape exits designed for easy removal. Instructions on the outside of the train tell rescue workers how to use a fire axe to strip away window frames. Exterior doors are now much easier to open and they have a clearly marked emergency lever. I think everybody's affected by what they see at these instances. Uh, I'm not, I don't care how strong or how great you think you are, you're affected forever by these incidents. I've been in the fire service 32 years and I've seen some pretty horrific things. And I think that, that night that you see an incident like this, no one comes away that's not unchanged. 